Warning, this podcast typically features spoilers and strong opinions. Proceed with caution. Hello, and welcome back to Then A Moment, the podcast where two lifelong storytellers talk about stories. Mm. I'm Pavi Prochko. I'm audiobook narrator, writer, actor, singer, etc. And I'm Colin Funk, a childhood development expert and a teaching artist. And today we're going to be talking about The, the Marvelous, marvelous Mrs. Mrs. Maisel. Maisel. But specifically... <laughs> Why we <laughs> we laughed at it because we're doing a specific episode. Yes, we're doing one episode. We're experimenting today with just one single episode yeah. out of the entire series. Specifically, season five, episode six. Yes, the Testerostial. Yes, the Testerostial. So it's this year has come out as it's in its final season. Yes. Um, we're going to talk about that more in a moment. But first. <laughs> Let's do our moments of the week. Great. Uh, I'll go first. My moment of the week was this lovely episode of Bob's Burgers. Oh, yeah. Um, they've been really nailing it this whole season. It was really, really good. Um, but this, um, this most recent episode that I watched was with... Um, Luis learning about Amelia Earhart. Oh, yeah. And it's That's the the moment when she finds out that Amelia actually disappears and like doesn't succeed uh -huh. is really touching. And it, it, and it, the, they play with chronology, which is interesting because today's episode, we're going to talk about a lot of chronology here, yes, yes. but they play with chronology and how they tell this story where you see some of Louise, like kind of doing her presentation on Amelia Earhart. And then you see her generating the idea to do the presentation right. and you see that she's obviously made some kind of decision to do this despite having found out that she's failed. Mm -hmm. And it's just a very touching moment to look back on after seeing how it all connects. And I really, really love it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good episode. Yeah. It's cute. What about you? Um, well, my moment, I saw um, the tour of Aladdin mm. this past week um, uh, with my company we go see Broadway and Chicago shows. Um, but it is, you know, adaptation from the Disney film to musical. So it's different. Mm -hmm. Like there's no Abu, the, the, um, Iago is not a parrot. It's a person. Um, too bad. I don't, <laughs> I don't love, there's no, like the magic carpet isn't like a, a character. It's oh. not, um, things like that, that, that I was disappointed that they didn't use puppets because I think every other Disney musical uses yeah, puppets. Yeah, they do. All of them do. Anyway, that show, while it had its flaws, it still had, um, the, the, it, the whole show is just the genie. They just like made a show to like highlight one person being the genie. And I mean, the guy playing the genie was excellent and it was very funny, but the, especially the magic in the, um, the cave of wonders, mm. And the spectacle of that, it was beautiful. There was like a couple moments in there that I was like, oh, ooh, it's magic. Ooh. <laughs> like the magic carpet ride later was eh, the there was yeah. like a couple like the 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 choreography and the fight scenes were whatever, but like the magic and the spectacle that they bring into the Cave of Wonders with the genie. Excellent. And then yeah. on top of it, like the humor from the genie was perfect. Very funny. Very like I would have watched that person just do a show the whole time and that's it. Do I mean, that's what the, the original movie is basically just I mean, like a Robin true. Williams vehicle. <laughs> Let's see how yes. many voices we can have Robin Williams do how much of his stand up he can do and clean up for the kids. But they, um, I mean like, but the movie's tight. Like, it is. It's good. Like the, I mean, they cut the song proud of your boy, which is in the Broadway musical. They like yeah. bring it back from the, the cut version of the movie and it's a, Great song. It's yeah. fantastic. And I think it works in the show, but they did the thing that's difficult and cut the good song yeah. to make the story tighter. Yeah. And I mean, cause the movie really, it clips along and it's really good and it's it probably excellent. would have just slowed the whole thing down. I mean, they did the same thing in uh, Emperor's New Groove 
Oh, um, wow. With uh, Yzma has a song in that one, which is great. It's a great song, but yeah, it really why, would why just... Why would you want Eartha Kitt to sing in your movie? I know, for real. But I didn't even know she had a song until very recently. And thinking about it, like I'm like, I don't even know where you'd put it. That movie is perfect. That movie's We perfect. might talk about that at some point I, soon. <laughs> but I would. That movie is perfect, and putting that song in would have maybe ruined it, would have slowed it down. Interesting. Agreed. Cool. All right. Well, let's get to it, shall we? Yeah, give us a give us a synopsis. All right. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, episode six of season five, The Testerostial. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we start this episode in 1990. No, so, we don't. We start it in 85. In 85. Sure do. Oh, the, right. The, her. Episode starts. At with a right at the stand up and she's talking and then five years later I the the action of the of the episode it, where it skips around in time but the whole point <laughs> is that the whole kind of the device of this that's kind of like a prologue right there's this prologue and Maisel is giving her the spiel about yes how she's gone through a breakup and then we move to 1990 where there's a roast yes. and Susie her manager is being roasted now if you haven't watched the show. Go watch it, but I'll give you a little, <laughs> very short synopsis of the show. Okay. You have uh, Midge Maisel gets uh, divorced from her husband and then becomes this trailblazer female um, comedian in the late 1950s and early 1960s. So it's like 58, 59, 60, 61. Some, in 61 is kind of where we're at now um, as the, the story moves. Um, and... Yeah. Um, Everything till now has been very chronological. It follows her and her family. Um, we don't get a lot of, we get some glimpses of past, um, but mostly it just kind of moves forward. Now this season, we're seeing a lot of future. We're seeing a lot of yes. their children as adults. We're seeing um, the relationship between Susie, her manager, and Midge, the comedian, devolving and seeing, you know, kind of going back and forth that way. Right. Um, so now we're in 1990, which is, I think, the furthest forward that we've gone I think in this season. Correct. Because we've seen yeah. stuff in the 70s, we've seen stuff in the 80s. But in 1990, we see this roast that Susie's being honored at a roast. Um, and we know that Susie and Maisel have had a falling out. And Susie, as usual, is like bitter and grumpy, but now she's also old. <laughs> now she's also alone, as we can see, that there's a kind of an arm's lengthness about her. Um, but she does agree to go to the roast. And there's like some talk about whether she will, but she does. She shows up. She arrives. There's roasters at the podium and also after the event around a table, speaking a little bit more candidly, kind of going back and forth. Mm-hmm. And they take us through the highlights of her career between um, the action of the series and up until uh, up until now and to the 1990s. So it's like from seasons one to four kind of sets everything up. So between where we are now in the series and 1990, what's all the stuff that's happened in there. Yeah. Uh-huh. So she's shown kind of hustling to confirm like the biggest deals in media, like the movie, the French connection. That's our time. Jesus Christ, superstar. Uh, she's loyal to her old friends. She's leaning on her mob allies, playing kind of four dimensional chess with her competition in order to get her friends, better positions. And then we find out that Joel finds out that she's in with the mob and then cuts a deal to get her out of the mob because Midge is going to be implicated. Well, Joel gets busted years later for being involved in the mob. Midge finds out that Susie was the reason. Joel's arrested and imprisoned, and she finds that their relationship with Midge has been strained, and Midge cuts off that partnership. Yet by the end of this roast, Mm -hmm. Midge has delivered a remote closing speech for the event, and Susie sees kind of this opportunity to make peace. Yep. And that's basically the episode. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yes. So very thorough. Yes. Um, and because a lot happens in this episode. Yes. Um, and I think that we should talk about that. <laughs> so um, we usually do kind of like a what did we know going into this moment? Um, of course, w- 
what did we know going in here? I'll just ask you. You talk now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, okay, so we've been watching the show regularly. We watch it mostly as it as it comes out. I think maybe not the first season, but we, we watch it week by week, especially, like, we're caught up with it. We, we watch yeah. it week to week. So we've seen all the episodes up to now. Mm-hmm. Um, I will also say that I have watched all of Gilmore Girls. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, I have not. And I've only the seen reason I some. bring that up is because I think Amy Sherman Palladino, the writer of both Maisel and um, Gilmore Girls, has a very specific style, and I think that... Um, that comes into play in the way this episode's written. Yeah. Um, and in the casting of the episode itself. Um, but that's it's kind of our background I here. Know, so we yeah. just like, we know the whole story up until now. So when we're getting this kind of disjointed time skipping episode, which we'll get into more detail in a moment, we do know what's going on. Yes. Because I would say a lot of a lot of the things that were happening are either hinted at either earlier this season or they yeah. they've been building up to it this entire series. Mm-hmm. So it's it does follow the rest of the series. It's nothing's nothing's confusing, obviously, as a as a casual watcher of the show. Right. Right. Um, so is there any particular place you want to start? Kind of um, with let's an talk angle. about the, the structure. Okay. Let's talk yeah. about the structure and how it, it feels. How it, it feels. feels <laughs> yeah, how it feels. Because uh, I've, the reason why we're doing this episode specifically is when we got to this episode, um, at least for myself, I felt like it, it, was, a, it was a departure. It felt different. Like mm-hmm. almost immediately it felt, it was almost... It almost felt like what community used to do, yeah. where the episode felt like a different. We're in like a different genre. genre. We're like doing a different movie now. Yeah. It, which, which I love community and I think it mm-hmm. definitely can work. And there's something about the progression of like the decades even and the, and the highly stylized um show itself like Maisel is very stylized yeah. already that that I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that they would do that right um, but it really is different because it, it felt very different and even me. though this whole season has been kind of going back and forth between future moments and then coming back for context mm-hmm. they've been toying with that the whole season this is the first one where it's like really this is very different well it's interesting because um if we look back at other seasons, there was the whole, there, there was the one season that was like fully in the cat's Yeah, it was just, <laughs> the it's, whole it's thing like was there. It's almost the opposite of yeah. what's happening now, mm-hmm. where it's like, now we're looking at macro over a big, long period of time. Now, yeah, like we're that, compressing a lot of time in, yeah. That season, we're like, this is one summer. Mm-hmm. And in one small vacation spot yeah and what happens there right and i thought i think that like that's very interesting that they that they played with time there where it's like Mm -hmm. oh we're kind of like living and exploring in this small time frame see how how much we can span yeah they're really expanding it and now this is the opposite of that where they're seeing how much the story like how how we can follow the story um, over a longer period of time. Yeah. And that's interesting you bring that up. I'd forgotten about that, that yeah. that was like one, it was just one summer. Yes. Um, and so like it really is season. the opposite of what's happening now. Um, and yet. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but I did. Yes. Yeah. Note that. Sure. Um, they certainly aren't uh, shy about playing with time. Yeah. Um, and yet something that, occurs to me is that this the narrative device of this episode being this roast let's let's specify though yes the episode is called the test to roast deal for a reason yes they've they very clearly set up that it's not just going to be a roast right that it's they offered her a roast and she's like no and they offered her a testimonial and she's like no 
And so they come to a compromise and somehow they come to the conclusion that a mixture of the two is something more palatable for her. Yeah. I'm not, I don't follow it. It feels like an excuse. Right. To do what they want to do, which is tell stories about her while also making jokes. Right. I understand that as a device and I don't even think they needed to justify it. No. And the justification of it, I think, was... It's a little awkward. A little strange. Yeah. And it just, like, like the test of Rose deal. Yeah. I, I, because, like, looking back, I think the first time, because I've watched it now a couple times, but, like, the first time I watched it, I kept being like, wait a minute, this is a roast, right? Why are they... <laughs> why, are, why are we now, like, wandering? And I, like, and, like, it hit me that, like, the next time I watched it, I'm like, oh, oh they there was- really set it up. That so they would be able to do it. Yeah. A roast. Because that bothered me the first time too, that I'm like, why is no one funny? I think it's still, <laughs> it's still, still bothers a little, me a little it bit. bothers me a lot because I think we could still probably have done this um, like without this wish, weird arbitrary I wish thing. I just called it a testimonial then. Yeah. Because all the people in her life are comedians anyway. Right. So they would have made would jokes. Make it, made it funny anyway. Yes. Yeah. That would have made more sense to me. Yeah. Agreed. So they have this event going on is like kind of one part of this device. It is the device. I mean, and then there is the after event is happening too. Like there's like a, like That's, everyone's yeah. like tearing everything down and we're getting more little stories intermixed here. So we kind of have like two little devices going at the same time. One of them is like during the event, it is the event. Right. Which is, you the know, actual however testimonials long, yeah. that they're saying to the crowd. Right. Over the course of this roast. So we've got like kind of that frame, that time frame yeah. is what kind of the characters are experiencing. Yes. And then also like the little bit of like the comedians are like drinking afterwards as the caterers are tearing everything down and they're given the real stories now. And however long people do that. So you kind of have like the characters in the world are living out. Four hours. They're, but they're essentially, they're using the whole event to have excuses to tell stories. And right. they, they, they use the during performance versus, you know, sitting around, yeah. shooting the shit. Like to they, kind of give the juicier things that are happening. Yeah. To give us they, the, like, oh my gosh, they wouldn't say that during a roast slash testimonial, but like in the back room, you know, when people are whispering around the, the water cooler, that's what they talk about. Yeah. Um, and so then this very expanded amount of time, or I guess like this very much smaller amount of time, a more realistic amount of time that we're watching, then is the vehicle through which we get to see 1963 to 1990. This whole yes, span of time 90. gets compressed down into these little snippets of story. And we get this like full picture of um, what's going on. Right. It also which, to, which to be clear, yeah. that episode doesn't jump time. The next episode goes back to where it was. Right. The next episode goes back to exactly where we started um, in the episode or where we ended the episode like, before. Sorry. It goes back to where we ended the episode before and we kind of continue on from there. Right. So it's like a little insertion mm -hmm. that expands the world. I guess like... There's really just one thing that happens in this episode that is like immediately um, has immediate ramifications in the next episode. And it's just when Mike takes over for George yes. as the producer. It's like a small moment when you find out that that's what she did. So I guess it's really 1961 to 1990, not 1963. But it's like oh. we do see her. She's instrumental in getting Mike the job. The next episode, Mike has that job. Mm -hmm. So it's like that is the one moment that actually happens chronologically that it keeps is within the show, that's keep that keeps the the, keeps the, the chronology right. It linear. links us in. It, 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 yeah, it, that's how it that's how it lands in the timeline of the show. Right. Um, but then everything else is presumably beyond the purview of the story. Which is also interesting because the story is The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. This is an episode about Susie. 
Yes. And there's usually like one or two per season that it's like, this is a, this is a Susie episode. Honestly, the Susie episode in the, the Catskills. The Catskills is season really good. Excellent. That's where she gets her uh, plunger, right? (laughs) Where she has her plunger. I don't know if it's where she gets it. It's so good. And also the one from the season before when she does the, um, the eulogy for. Well, the eulogy. I mean, it's incredible. That's some of the best acting on TV I've she ever seen. She is ever. a treasure. We'll, we'll talk about that, I'm sure, a little more. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so it's interesting having this device going because they also don't tell the stories chronologically, which is an interesting choice to make. Because we have, you know, they start giving their testimonials and the stories start in 1970 and then we go back to 1963 and then we go forward to 1965 and then we go back to 19 Mm -hmm. or to 85 then to 61 and then you know we're going like all over the place back and forth back and forth um i I mean and the it's interesting i think uh, how what things they choose to put where and how it lines up with this, what is the change at the end of this? Like what actually happens in this episode? Mm-hmm. Like what is, okay. So my, my thought watching this episode yeah. is there are a lot of, a lot of the storylines are tied in. So we're seeing just like continuations of some of the storylines. And like you said, the, um, uh, Mike Carr yeah. getting getting that job. That's just a continuation of that storyline. Right. We have heard about um Midge and um Susie. Susie's relationship. Yeah, we've heard about their their falling out. I th- we we know that Joel is on to Susie about the um the mob activity. Yeah. And we actually already saw a scene with Midge and Joel in jail. Right, so we've we seen know. her visiting so Joel we're, there. We're, we're filling in some some gaps yeah. that we already know about. Right, so it's not those don't feel like the story of what's happening necessarily in in the episode. Right, so I kept thinking like, what is the story of the episode itself? Yeah, and does it function well? as part of like the overall story or is it just, is this just a crossroads between many stories Yeah, and we're just like, we're just getting like this piece of this story over here, this piece of this one over here yeah, and we're kind of weaving them together, but it's not supposed to feel like a story yeah, and it's not supposed to feel like, like it's not, it's not the same moment in all of the stories but it does feel like it's part of all the stories. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. That the the device also is, like it's using this <clears throat> journey that Susie is on in 1990 <laughs> to tell us where we've gone from all of those little, like loose ends that they've given us throughout the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if um, I don't know if it works for me so much. Um, yeah, there's a there's a, at least as part of like a cohesive whole. It's almost like on its own. It's actually kind of interesting. It's a little bit uh, it's a little bit like Virginia Woolf. <laughs> it's a little Mrs. Mm-hmm. Dalloway, where it's like you're just seeing kind of like someone's inner thoughts. Or you're seeing kind of like these memories of a life gone by, and they kind of have this internal journey through this very small amount of time. Yeah. But it requires five seasons of backstory in order to get any of it. Sure. Yeah, I think... I think... They are trying to accomplish a lot, like we've said. Yeah. They're trying to give us all of these different storylines while I, I feel like this is an opportunity to br- show us Susie. Yeah. And like really, it's not, I wouldn't say character development, but like we're filling her out. Yeah, we're see- we're seeing her character, right, as this like you know, avatar in the space and we, she actually makes this decision where we get to see her make a lot of decisions 
And right. ultimately, kind of the most important one's this last one, right? Right. I did, I it's wrote small. out uh, I, I, a small, like, story event sentence, just like in one sentence, kind of like, what the episode is this episode? Yeah, what did you say? Um, currently working title or working, working sentence. So Susie achieves great success when she excels at her work by making these shady deals with the mob and despite the risks of losing her closest friend. That's kind of like this story moment huh. is what's happening here. And I think this is, I mean, tell me what you think in a moment, but it's like, there's something interesting there because it's like such a small element of this episode. There's like other uh, things that go on in this episode that might be more um, kind of in your face as far as like what the story is happening. But as far as like- That's, that's, that's my, yeah, that's my point. It's like the actual things that are happening in the, the stories, the old, yeah. the, the, you know, the stories that they're telling. Right. Those aren't the story themselves. Right. That's not what's happening in the episode. Right. They're, they're, they're all kind of um, development, like you said, like character development. Um, and it's out of, it's out of order. It's almost like the, like the structure of the story is a little bit out of order. We also don't that's, even really, if that's the case, if we like accept that this sentence is like what's going on, then like our inciting incident of this storyline of this episode happens way back when Susie starts making deals with the mob. Yeah. I'm not sure I agree with your sentence just generally. Yeah. Um, If I'm looking at what is important, it's like, it's Susie fighting the line between personal and business. Yeah. And <coughs> there are things in her personal life that get in the way of her business life. Mm -hmm. There are things in her business life that get in the way of her personal life. Right. And that all kind of culminates in this big problem. Like the problem is they are estranged. Yeah. They, we don't find out how or why yet, but it starts that way. The episode is like, that's where we are. That's where we're living. Yeah. Um, and it ends with, I'm going to put those things that have gotten in my way aside. Finally and make the very small choice at the end to ask for Mitch's number. Right. Very tiny, tiny thing that she does. Yeah. But very different than what they've laid out the rest of the episode. Right. So if we like shift my thinking, I, I had all of that in mind when I was kind of conjuring this up. I'm and sure. it's, it's just, it's, it's a little strange. And I think it's the challenge of the way they structured it to kind of determine where does exactly this storyline begin? Cause it doesn't seem to begin in this episode. And maybe it hasn't even sure. ended in this episode. And of course like the, like, that's, that's going to be all episodes of a long of course. series. And maybe that's, maybe that's part of my complaint is that like this Excuse me. episode doesn't have a complete story of its own. What, what would make it a complete story? What's missing? Um, all of the stuff that we know that happened before. Like we have to know those things in order for this storyline to make sense. There isn't a, um, I mean, the story is in the end, this roast. I mean, I she guess comes I in as this like nasty person, you know, maybe not, but like she comes in as this kind of like scary um, figure. And then uh, after the course of hearing about her own life, she gets at the end, the um, makes the decision to, you know, take, get Midge's number. Yeah. Which, which immediately is followed by, oh, she already sent her number over. Yeah. Right. Which doesn't change, you know, 
her action, like her change. Right. Um, I think that's the, you know, but like that, I mean, I think if you hadn't watched any other episode, mm-hmm. they set up very clearly a distraught relationship. Yeah. There's a lot of weird things, but in the end it's, it's stories that, that are, that don't feel, it doesn't feel like the stories while they, again, act as, um, plot for the full series Yeah. for the episode. It's less about the plot mm. and more about like milestones showing examples development. Yeah. Kind of develop showing what, what is at stake in like her crisis moment. Mm-hmm. Cause she, well, it's not like yeah. the actual action that's happening, the actual plot things, the actual things that she accomplishes in those things. I don't think as the story in the, the episode itself, mm-hmm. those don't matter. Yeah. That's, it doesn't feel like the story is about the action. They right. use it as a, I think where I see it kind of break down is they use it as a device to also tell plot points. Yeah. That we like things about. that we want to know about and, and we're going to need to know connect. about it. Yes, yeah, we do. But I don't, if as far as like the story, the story of this episode, in the episode, it's not about the plot. It's right. not about the action that's happening. It's kind of those higher order things. Like what does it mean? That first, that first um, montage they show is like the her. Crown. Yeah. The triple crown. She's doing business and she's, she's doing, doing it business. good. She's good at the her The second job. one, the she's doing personal and she's doing it well with uh, what's his name? Harry, um, her mentor, um, uh, she's doing, yes. She's like, he's Harry dying. Drake. Yeah, Harry Drake is dying and she's with him and she's like, she's his, you know, adoptive daughter at that point. And she mm-hmm. stays with him and is doing personal life. And then she's business creeps in a little bit because she kind of like takes his clients and he offers them. But, you know, that's the. Yeah, but they. But like they maybe. Very- like there's something weird goes on there. I think this whole episode, I think that's an important point to touch on. They, I, part of the reason I think they do it like this is they're keeping this, um, sort of the secrecy, the privacy yeah. of Susie intact. Yeah. Where they keep. Like nobody knows what the, happened. Exactly. They keep bringing, they using this device, the people telling stories, people like, to her, to an audience, it's jokes. It's probably exaggerated. In fact, at the end, when Midge has her video, one of the first things she says is, I'm sure everyone has said a lot of appropriately inappropriate things about Susie. Mm -hmm. Uh, Most of them earned, but about half of them are true. Yeah. And I think... That it was like we're actually I was like, seeing a an unreliable okay. story. <laughs> like when I when, like I kept being like, I'm not sure. I don't know. I think they do a lot in the end of the episode that like in rewatch, I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I I missed think that. you were doing things that I missed. Yeah. And I think part of the problem, if you could call it that, in the episode is that they're like, because they're trying to do all of it at the same time. Yeah. Um, it gets muddy and you get lost. I get and because I hate it takes a second watch to get it. And As the first time for story specifically, yeah. it is kind of, it's jarring. It's the, jarring. Like if I think maybe if I had gone in and been like, this is a, this is a, a different thing. They even set it up at the beginning. Like I like even watching it this time, I'm like, yeah, they start with their stand up. They've done that before. Yeah. But it's, it, it's, it's later. It's like a new stand up. It's 85, starts at 85. Yeah. Like I said, thought that was weird at the beginning. Starts in 85, and she's like, uh, broke up with my friend. Like, that's right. the stand up. So you're like setting up the episode. I'm like, this feels like something different than what we do. Like, yeah. we don't have Midge as a narrator. It's right. like an episode of Seinfeld. Doesn't he, like, do, he, <laughs> yeah. he kind of does that on Seinfeld? <laughs> yeah. Um, Standing in front of the brick wall. And like, you know, kind of like previewing the episode, like right. that. Um, but being kind of like that narrator to, they do that a lot. They're using people and their storytelling as action. Right. More than the action in the stories. Right. Um, but like that, after that, the, um, so that little 
intro with her telling the story. But then we cut to, all right, we're in 1990 and here's the event. They show yeah. someone and there's like <clears throat> a... A little they like give Chiron. A name. Yeah, like, it's everybody's named and the the, the dean, style just the, totally changes. Like, this is nothing. This is like nothing else in the show. They've yeah. never done that. And they throw in a, like a weird joke like Barry, he wasn't invited. Like all these people that we've never met before. Right. I think um, Mike Mike is, is the in there. He's the only one yeah. that we knew before. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why did they call him the dean? I'm not really sure. Like, yeah, I think it's, there's this. It's unclear what the what the little nicknames they give them. Yeah. And it's like, oh, is this supposed to, like to be like a build a, a world of some kind? It's like, weird. Yeah, there's like, uh, I think about like who, who's like the person, the camera, like the eye mm-hmm. of the, like whose eye are we seeing this through? Yeah. Like someone is showing us this and it's yeah. like someone who's like at the table, like someone who's like, at the event and then at the table, like sitting around with everyone and like kind of like, you know, privy to that. So it's like, oh. that's who, so they know and we kind of like are getting a hint of this world. Um, yeah, it does feel very, to me, like documentary style. Yeah. It feels like we're in, we're in it. We're see like, we're seeing the, like, it's just like a documentary where they're like, look, this event happened, but it's not a, the televised version of the event. It's the behind the scenes. We see right. little clips of the event and we right. see little clips of them like chatting about it afterward. Right. It's, it's, yeah. it's a mighty wind. It's best in show. Right. It's, it's that, that it gives us that feel. Um, that, like even those, like those nicknames, it feels like, yeah. That. And it, again, it puts us in a different, it's, I think it's supposed to prime us for it to be something different. Yeah. I don't and it's, know how, uh, I don't know how successful it is. I think, I think a lot of the complaint that I have, um, it revolves around that world building where it's like, we get mm. these, these weird titles that come up on, uh, underneath people as they're coming out of the cars and we don't know who they are. Then yeah. we have these weird jokes that are like painfully topical in the kitchen where they're talking about like, oh, did you see that, you know, Robin Williams thing? And, um, oh my gosh, you know, like George Carlin's going to be the conductor on Thomas the Tank Engine. La, la, la. It's just like, like, okay, I know we're in the night. I know it's 1990. I get it. Um, they love just packing it. They with really do pack it with I references. Mean, and it's, Paladino does that kind of across the board. Yeah. It's just like, Reference after reference after reference. I mean, it's yeah. like it, it's it it is kind of like a stylized. We are like it like dialogue feels very intellectual mm-hmm. throughout like all of her shows that where there's yeah there's like we're in the now we're in the like we know what's happening now we like we everyone knows and they're talking about the people and the books and the media yeah. and the like everything is just happening and being talked about. Yeah, and I think that goes back and forth, especially in Maisel. Like, I can't speak to Gilmore Girls, but in in Maisel, it can sometimes feel anachronistic, or it falls like it sometimes seems intellectual, and then sometimes it seems very sure. um, pedestrian. It's like. Uh, you know, it's like someone was just like, I just have to write something really quick. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't hit all the time. Um, yeah, I think my, my thing with Amy Sherman Palladino's writing, I, I have less issue with the writing itself. Um, most of the time it's just, I think a lot of that writing, the style, the, the, because it is, I think it's just like stylized and it's like, it is hard to accomplish as an actor. Yeah. And, um, even when you're like doing a style, sometimes like the comedy doesn't hit, even though like, it's weird because like a lot of the jokes throughout the, the show, they are funny. Yeah. But I see people not hit them yeah. in a way that is funny, but I can still see them and be like, oh, that's, that's a, clever. That's, that's that's a clever. clever joke. And for some reason, it's really not funny when she says it. Yeah. And it's not weird. Always, not like, it's not funny, but it's like, yeah. I didn't, it didn't make me laugh. Yeah. Like, and it feels, it feels a little bit like they're telling us that it was funny instead of like it, 
I don't know. Well, if it, I, and it's it's always jarring when they have. It's almost every time the laugh track that they use, or track. or when the people in the audience are laughing, and I'm like, it wasn't. That wasn't. I'm not laughing. It wasn't that funny. Like any time Lenny Bruce hasn't has been in this season like once, but any time Lenny Bruce was doing oh. his standups in previous seasons, uh-huh. I'm like, is that funny? Are you funny? Everyone's <laughs> like, oh my God, he's the greatest. He's so funny. And I'm like, right. mm, you, I didn't find that standup funny at all. Like none of the standup is really any good. It doesn't feel like it. Like there's like something. There's something weird something about it. Weird. Um, and it might just be, it's hard. It might just be hard to recreate the yeah. like stand up feel with the energy in the room. Like we just have to like to act that kind of room out. Maybe that's part of maybe this something kind of comedy. Like, yeah. Um, but even some of the jokes in some of this, like the smaller yeah. context, I'm like, I don't know. I'm just like, yeah. I know that's funny. I know yeah, that's a clever it's joke. a clever joke. I think a lot of the time Midge is the, the culprit of that, where it's just like she says this line that's like really cutting and it's really good. And I'm just like, why wasn't that funny? Yeah. It should have been funny. Alex Borstein is perfect. Every single well, word Alex that Borstein comes out of her perfect. mouth is <laughs> it's like incredible. Same with Tony Shalhoub. Oh, Tony Shalhoub. Oh, man. And um, actually the, oh, the her place, the her mom. I'm going to look that up. Who plays her mom? Hold, please. Uh, da, 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 da. Please stand by. Uh, Rose Weissman is played by um, Hinkle. Hinkle. Marin Hinkle. Marin Hinkle. Very good. I think she's very funny. Oh, she's excellent. Yeah. And not that Midge herself is bad. Right. Rachel, she's not. Rachel Brosnahan. Yeah. Right? Rachel um, Brosnahan. Yep. Um, she she's not is, bad. She's an excellent actress. She she does well. I think because it's stylized and because it's like she's it doesn't doesn't feel like she's a stand up comedian. I think she yeah is playing one convincingly without actually feeling that funny. Yeah, yeah. Not that not that that actually bugs me that much. In fact, well, not I that love it, it the show. Not, it doesn't get in the way of the story. No, it doesn't get in the way in of fact. the storytelling. And maybe that's part of it. It was like, it, if we made it too funny, we wouldn't want the rest of the story. I mean, um, it does beg the question of like, as a performance story of someone like kind of like really being able to excel at their, at their craft. Sure. It does it's as a, an audience member make me question. It's like, disbelief. wait, yeah. It makes For me sure. really suspend hard. Yes, um, I have to just like. I just have to like accept that. Okay, they think it's funny, so it's there. Yeah. Um, but I think I think with my second watch for sure, um, and after this discussion, I've liked this episode more. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it more for sure. Um, I, that's the thing is like, again, with <laughs> keep bringing it back to Amy Sherman Palladio, but yeah. I think like she sometimes is more clever. Cause like there's a lot of moving pieces yeah, and like there's a lot of like nice themes and nice little storylines and they all kind of like, they, I, I was watching this and I was like taking some notes, like each yeah. little part. I'm like, what is each little part doing? And there's like moments toward the end where I'm like, oh, that's, they're all, there's a reason why these are the stories. Yeah. Um, that are coming together and it takes a little bit of thinking. It, yeah, takes, it takes a little, a little like, bit of legwork on our side, on our end to, to really kind of get the full breadth and impact of it. Which I go back and forth with in general Yeah. Um, about, is it, I think that is okay. Mm-hmm. Generally, if it's also if you're also in it to begin with. Yeah. And and I wouldn't say I wasn't, but it it certainly was as we've said before jarring that first time around going through. Yeah. You know, getting that kind of real departure in style. Yes. Um and it is it is a a different kind of action in the scene. So if we accept that this the story of this episode is just the roast. All of the action of the story is her listening to stories about her life. Mm-hmm. We as the audience get like little glimpses of like the gossip, but essentially 
she's thinking back on all of that too. That's the whole thing. And she's doing the same thing the whole way. She's like, fine, fine. I'm listening, listening, listening. And she can't do that anymore once Midge go, is up on the screen. Yeah. I think it's a story of, it feels to me like it, this is the story of Susie thinking she knows what she wants. Yeah. Going for it over and over again, kind of doing like the three steps forward, two steps back thing over and over and over. Yeah. And we are, we're in the place where she's at peak success Yeah, in terms of job. Right. And that is not what's important in her life. Right. We are seeing. Now she's seeing the regret. We are seeing the, I saw, I saw some, I didn't even read the articles, but I saw like, you know, after this episode came out, like scrolling through Facebook and stuff, there yeah. was like, oh, the latest episode of Maisel ruins one of the best female friendships on TV. And I think I, I kind of push back on that Yeah, because they show a real and complicated friendship between two female characters yeah. that is, that they're not, it's never been easy. It's never been completely nice. Right. It's They've never been like at odds sweet. the it's whole not, time. It's, but it's not all business. It's not all, it's not particularly close. Yeah. But they, they do have a bond. They do look out for each other. Yeah. And it doesn't, it's not pretty. And they're like, things go really poorly. I mean, we wouldn't be upset about the fact that the relationship falls apart if it wasn't a strong relationship with strong bond. Like just the fact that it falls apart is indication of its importance and the success of developing that. And, and I think this episode, they specifically leave it um, unclear how they, if they yeah. reconcile at all. Right. Um, and I don't, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what they do if they even touch back. I assume they'll do something even if they don't clarify it completely, yeah. that they'll, they'll, it feels like they're setting up to me. They're like, this is what we're going for. <laughs> this is what we're going to, this is what yeah. we're going to end with. This is what you're now waiting. We haven't actually, because that won't happen for a long time. Yeah. We have to set up the, the break in the friendship earlier. Yeah. So we can to make see, it make, so we can see them repair it or, yeah. see the potential of repair and even I if we never that's why they actually did this see when they did it because yeah. because of the final season and because i think they want to show a complex female relationship yeah and they want to see one that doesn't just like survive every i mean I, I the first time i watched it i was like i was like wow they weren't friends for a long time and I watched it again. It was like 85 to 90. Yeah, it was, like, it was like, like five that years. Is a long time. It is a long time. That is a long time. Especially after a long career, but I was like, oh, that was it. It was five years. Okay. It's just five years. And they're already like looking to reconcile after some pretty big things happened yeah. between them. Right. After essentially Susie was kind of responsible for getting yeah, Joel. Certainly involved. Ex-husband, but her, like the love of her life. Yeah. Getting, getting Maisel, the Maisels involved in the mob. That was Susie's deal. And it had serious consequences. Right. And that even that, even with the the complexities of it, we see a moment where they get kind of nasty toward each other. Yeah. Which absolutely happens. Of course. And but also a moment of tenderness, warmth. Tenderness and yeah. hope and Yeah. And that that kind of relationship, even when it's not perfect, even when the relationship itself isn't like, this was great until it broke. Right. It was complicated. And then it stopped, which like makes it really hard, especially they're like setting up Susie. This is yeah. really, Susie, I think this whole episode, they're giving you uh, example after example after example of her coming up to some problem and having her emotions take over whether yeah. or not that goes well for her. Yeah. She, 
she has this meeting with this actor who wants to mm-hmm. sign her. <clears throat> yeah. Played by Darren Chris. Yeah. I that, think it's that, Darren Chris. I think right. it's Darren Chris too. It looks, it like, looks, Darren looks like Darren Chris at least. Um, uh, I guess we could sure. confirm. <laughs> yeah, we, we should confirm if it was Darren Chris. Was Darren Chris in Maisel? Was Darren Chris in <laughs> Maisel? Uh, Darren Chris as Taylor. Yes, Taylor. Yep. yep. That, that was, was him. He looked I, so old. Um, um, not like old, old, but it's just but like, you know, not a child anymore, not on Glee anymore. Right. It's Even like 15 Glee, years before. Like mid 20s. Yeah, for real. Point. But yeah, um, he's like trying to like w- have her sign him. But she, the the thing is, he's signed with Harry wow. Drake. Yeah, her, her mentor. Her mentor, her, look, one of the only people she's close to, which they also touch upon yeah. on this but that relationship like it doesn't make any sense not that she has to sign him right and screw over harry Drake because she wouldn't have done that but that she gets so angry at him and just like lays into him yeah. and calls him a bad actor and call like she can't control herself she yeah. can't control those parts of her emotions i mean she's done it throughout the whole season that, yeah like that's, things that have that's how she been set up her and, mo that she lets those emotions get in her way. And it happens both ways where her personal life gets in the way of her career and where her career like gets in the way of, yeah. she doesn't let. She, she like, emotional. I mean, yeah. And like in earlier episodes of the season, she's screwing over one of her actors um, who's getting, you know, on the show. Uh, earlier or later? It's earlier in the season. Yeah. It's earlier. Which one? Well, it's when she's like, you need to decline your spot on that episode. I'm going to give it to to Midge. Maybe it is later. I don't know. I thought it was later. Maybe it's later. Yeah, maybe that is later. But it's like the, she is not always, she's like going with her her heart. And she's not always, even if it doesn't mean it's going to go well. And it doesn't go well. I also, this is another like setup of, they've been doing this the whole season that like Midge is her biggest success and yeah. we still don't know what the break is. We don't know yeah. what the big break is. And I think right. that's Cause she's apparently a real big success. She becomes, yeah, huge. She can rent Susie's a big. Hawaiian Island. <laughs> and just throw that <laughs> and away. And then throw it away. Um, well, that was really interesting too. Yeah. Because that was her career side yeah kind of takes over where like that's she does things for midge and yeah she's there for on personal business and then now she's gonna do work now it's gonna get in the way yeah it's i think that i i watched it i was like i don't get this one i don't get it um but it like did a couple things for me that the 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 hawaii scene where it showed her actually going through hard things that she does for Midge. Yeah. Not only does she name them, but we see her deal directly with the parents, with the baker. Yeah. With calling her fiance. To let him this, like, know. Difficult, yeah. Like we're watching her do the difficult things that like, like, yeah, it's like kind of jokey, but we're actually watching them, like how hard it actually is. Yeah. And watching her go from like, they, oh, they, I love they, Hawaii. Hawaii is wonderful. And it's like, I Her emotion hate switches Hawaii. are yeah. very, I think it is designed very, very well. clear yeah. in the, like, where they're like, I love this pigeon. I'm happy <laughs> oh, yeah. now. <laughs> that tickles me because I got uh, George Tol- Toledano fired. Yeah. So she's happy. Like, when the rest of the time she hates the pigeons. It's like yeah. the switches. And at the end, like, like in Hawaii, she's like, I love Hawaii. And Midge is the one like ruins, ruins it. it. Yeah. And then at the end, she like hates this Hawaii. whole episode, yeah. but no, in the end of the mm. episode, at the beginning of the episode, yeah. she's like just miserable and nothing. Yeah. At the end, she's like walking out with a little skip on her step. She's happy at the end. Yeah. She decides to walk, right? Yeah. That's a walk. Oh home. yeah. I think I'll walk. I think I'll walk. Home. What a, what a cliche. I know it's so cliche. So, so, <laughs> it's it's really so nineties movie show. actually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. So I think I, going back, I watched it and I was like, it feels like an excuse to have a bunch of, I mean, a lot of the actors that the cast, like I mentioned, were 
small roles on yeah. Gilmore Girls. Mm-hmm. I mean, Alex Borstein herself was a small role on Gilmore Girls. I think yeah. it was uh, originally supposed to play Suki, but um, I don't remember what happened and why that didn't happen, but still had a small part on Gilmore Girls because it's very close with Amy Sherman yeah. Held, you know? Um, and thank goodness she has this vehicle because Alex Borstein... She's so good. I just, I, I am in awe of her every time. I it's just, I don't know why she hasn't done more work. Well, uh, I hope now is, I hope that she is might a, be my favorite actress. I think she just might be my favorite actor yeah. in, in the world. I yeah. just think she's so good. I mean, she has a couple moments. I mean, speaking of that, yeah. Why don't we head on to yeah. superlatives? Let's do superlatives. I, I, we've kind of gone through beaten to death, all of our kind of things that worked and things that didn't work. It's a complicated mixed bag for this one, for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I think overall, so I before think superlatives, yeah. overall, I say like, I, I don't love the how and it like, it doesn't feel like it's quite accomplished in everything. Yeah. And it does need like a watch or two to like hit some of these like nuanced moments and things. We'll yeah. get to it. Um, I'll use it. I'll, okay. I'll do a superlative about it. Yeah. Um, it's also that it, it, I think it, especially if you're going to be that stylized, you're going to be relying on these kind of anachronisms. You're going to be relying on these little um, kind of jokey um, devices like putting names of the actors or the of the characters under them. And mm-hmm. it just you have to be really um, careful about it and serious. And it just some of it just didn't land simply because. I didn't find the jokes funny. I found the anachronism yeah. clunky. The references of, of, to the time were a little painful. Um, so it's just, yeah, that's like, it's not even so much that the device itself doesn't work. It's just like, okay, yeah, you're going to make it happen in the nineties. I don't need to hear every single nineties reference that there was, you know, I don't need to yeah. hear all of it. It's, it's like the, the storytelling is, is well thought out and, yeah. and, and intelligent. Um, but it doesn't necessarily feel... It's like missing a little bit of heart. <laughs> the the <laughs> storytelling, the, not, right, the actual, not the actual story itself. There's a couple moments. There's a lot of like, heart in it, but it's like... it's, it's especially, the, especially the dialogue between characters, heart's written right into it. Yes. It's the relationships. There's a lot of heart in the world building well and in the... In the, the story building. Is a little like that. Especially yeah. this episode. The world building is a little bit clunky for me. Yeah. Yeah. But I think especially after a second watch and and then especially after this conversation, I do like the episode more, more as I yeah. think about it. I thought I think I did too. I like after it is I think it is especially enjoyable digging into it a little bit. Yeah. Because there's a lot to dig into. There's a into, lot to dig into. And it's and it's well crafted and so it's you can dig into it. Yeah. So that is my that's overall what overall, I overall that's now. yeah, I think that's great. So, okay. So, so superlatives. superlatives. Bam, um, hmm. So our Oscar worthy moment. Oscar moment. Mm-hmm. You got one? Um, I'm deciding. Yeah. I'm, you know, other than, I know we talked about Alex Borstein's acting. So there's a couple moments that yeah. she can take home. Uh, she just like. Throughout the season, she's just so good. The, the whole series, My God. like, there's just moments where I'm like, "Oh, I forgot what real emotions looked like." Right. <laughs> yeah. And part of that's because everyone's the show very is good. stylized. Yeah, everyone's very good, but then it's like, "Oh no, she's actually she's going through it." Yeah. Um. um for this one, um, I don't know. Do you have something specific? I think, I think I just have to choose. Uh, Alex Borstein moment. Just one of them. I'll just choose one. (laughs) Her whole performance is wonderful, but this one moment and it's when she loses her mind at Darren Chris. That's really like, Oh, she's, I mean, it's like you see the loyalty she has to her friends and it's just like, it's so save the cat moment where it's like, you really get to see like the, her metal in that moment Mm -hmm. where she's not going to screw him over and she's not going to, you know, at least not to his face. Who knows what happens later? But that's like, she's not going to do that to him. And she is willing to t- let this guy know exactly what she thinks. And it's just such a, like, 
the way he she digs into him is just like oh, so a, she, painful. And it's so the thing it's it's like one of those. I mean, you pay for the fucking drinks. Oh my god, he's I, it's but so good. It's like one of those like she gets to say the things that we're thinking on the inside. Yeah, that's what that character does a lot. Yeah, it's, it's really like, nice. Oh, she doesn't have the filter, and it's very satisfying to see someone actually say the things that you're thinking on the inside. You're like, yeah. ooh, that's. Mm-hmm. That's satisfying because it's never satisfying in real life. Not to me, like to say things that are especially going to hurt other people. Like I yeah. can't, I can't handle that. No. Um, but it's satisfying to seeing someone else. Yeah. On screen to it. Um, nice. I think my, I'm going to sort of do, it's uh, two moments kind of, okay. but the, I think this episode uh, was very interesting that they, that they, that they use moments. This is an episode. It's an episode of moments. moments. A lot yeah. of moments. But they, the, a couple moments that really stood out to me um, that they did well um, in showing how Susie shows her love. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was two specific ones that were like perfect. Yeah. I think when um, – they're arguing about something um, with Harry Drake. He's she's sitting um, in the hospital. Harry Drake is. They're they're watching a movie and they're talking about this movie. Yeah. And they they disagree about something in the movie. And he goes, "You're gonna disagree with me? I'm on my deathbed." And she goes, "You are not on your deathbed." Yeah. And he goes, "I'm dying." Like. And she goes, "Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm gonna move you to another bed because this one's too sweaty." <laughs> And the immediate, I can't deal with that. Yeah. That's not happening. But like to see her friend say like, I need that. I kind of need this indication. And she's like, I'm, oh, I'm going to give you as much as I can. Yeah. And I'm going to say, I'm going to do a joke instead. I'm going to yeah. joke about that not being what I mean. So I am not. I, can I don't see actually that have that to say it, but I, for you, yeah. that, like I'm not devaluing your feelings right now, Yeah, but I can't handle it. Yeah. So I'm going to joke about moving you to another bed because that's about as close as I can get to it. Yeah. And I think that is, it was like really, that's really, poignant. really yeah. striking to me mm-hmm. that it was like, she didn't resist it. Yeah. She didn't continue to say like, no, 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 no. you're not. Nope. You're not. She, she, yes she said, <laughs> yeah, she, yes she yes standed for herself away from it because yeah. she needed to, right. Because you can't, she can't be like, it's, it's good because like, I feel like so much of the time it's like, they say, oh, you're not dying. Yeah. I'm dying. No, you're not. No, you're not. Or yeah. it's like, you know, I am dying. Yeah, I know. I know. know. It's just so. She doesn't actually have to give in here. Yeah. But that's how she shows. Yeah. I love there. And I think the other moment that kind of does that is when um, she finds Dinah with a bruise Mm. with Mm -hmm. a, she's that Dinah's gotten her, her assistant slash junior manager. I don't know what the position is. Gets beaten up. Gets beaten up by her boyfriend at the time. And, um, like Susie, like Susie's like, you're going to do that. Like, it's like almost like this, like she's like mad at her. You're going to take that day off. Her. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're going to do this and you're going to do this. And I'm going to, I'm going to send this to you and you're going to take it. And yeah. You're going like, to eat this thing. You're going to have a delicious meal and you're just going to do it. Go away. Yeah. But she can't get closer than that. The yeah. sincerity about those feelings is too difficult. Yeah. And I think they, they keep those moments so tiny, mm-hmm. so small, and not the highlight of even the rest of those scenes. Right. Like, that's not what the scenes are necessarily about. Right. That's not what that, like, we go to, like, her sending the mob in. It was like the story was about her right. mob connections. But that's not what the story of the, the episode is. Right. So it doesn't matter that she's sending the mob in. Yeah. You know, that's, yes, that's the gossip. The, the, other, the other thing... Yeah, all of the, I think we mentioned it, but like keeping that privacy, that secrecy where they're like, 
everyone's like, this might have happened. This might not have like that. I think yeah. that is well done. I think yeah. that is. Um, That's pretty good. It's good. Um, any other um, oh mm. moments? Uh, unearned. Yeah, we need an unearned moment. I would say mm-hmm. um, out of all of the. I mean, there was, okay, there's a couple. Yeah. Uh, that's because there's so many moments. There's so many moments, um, little guys. I think my, I, I, I still am not 100% clear what the first, the triple crown moment where she's like getting deal after deal after deal. Yeah. Why we have to see her get three different ones. Why they have to happen on the same day. Uh, why we have to watch them all happen. On that, on that golf. On the golf course. course yeah. Of course, like it ties back because later Harry's like, you got to learn how to golf. Like, yeah, like yeah, do yeah. They weave ties. everything together. Sure. Um, but it doesn't, I'm, I don't, I still don't quite, I feel like the things Is that I was something jotting down extraordinary, that they were telling maybe? me, I was like, we already know those things. Yeah. You don't need to show necessarily there right. about those things. And, um, and it wasn't extraordinary enough, really. At the end, it, that it segment ends with the last person who buys Jesus Christ Superstar mm-hmm. before they go back to 1990. Mm-hmm. He pulls out a little vial and says, "Want some blow?" That's the end of that scene. What? Very small. I missed it the first time, and I think. The second time even that I was reviewing I it, missed it and too. I went back and I watched it. I was like, I'm sorry. He just offered her blow just like real quick at the end. And she like, I think turns it down, but like, I'm like, is that important? Whoa. I don't know what that is. Is that just a joke? Because sometimes some of those things are just jokes. Maybe it's a joke or maybe it's another nineties reference. <laughs> Maybe right. Like how all of the all of the kitchen staff are all uh, Spanish speaking Latinos. That was a flashback. Oh, was it? The yeah, blow the, was a flashback. It was part of the golf. Oh, oh, okay. So that that moment I didn't understand, and I still don't understand. Mm. So I would say that is my unearned moment. Interesting. That whole little scene. That okay. Um, I think my unearned moment is. Um, with her sister coming out and like singing the the disco song. Yes. I didn't really get it and it didn't do anything other than I have she's like obviously like it, it's showing us how she's like got her sister work and you know has like been instrumental in this thing and that she's a little embarrassed. I think it's just one more thing though. Yeah. Um, because I thought that too and I don't. And it shows that like it, it, it goes along with what we were saying earlier where it's like her personal life gets in the way of the work yeah, and like right. she's making bad decisions for the people she loves. Right. Often. Yeah. Sure. She's like turning down work because of it. She's getting like giving work. But it's like shouldn't all about given, like yeah. the loyalty to the people she loves yeah. and how she's kind of like driven to do that. Yeah. Just across the board. So it does that a little bit, but like, again, we've seen that all epi- the all the seasons, like we don't need it over and over again. Right. But yeah. there was a tiny moment that I, again, only noticed looking closely. I'm not sure it was even intentional. I think it was hmm. that in introducing her, they're like, we haven't, you ready for a surprise guest? No, I'm not. <laughs> well, too bad. We got one for you anyway. It's a joke. And then like, we got her over two flights and it's, we're supposed to think it's see, Midge. We're supposed to think it's Midge, but then you see a moment of like her being excited. Oh, it's for a split second. She's like, she's finally like, this is what I, it's like, it's almost like, oh, she wanted that the whole time. Yeah. It's like just a split second and it's over because like when it's like your sister test, she's like, oh, like it's like a. Like a disappointment oh, yeah. into confusion, but like there, she actually just like wanted just it to be a Midge. moment where I think Alex Borstein is like, "Oh my God, Midge is gonna be here. It's gonna be Midge." Yeah, and like, how, like there's I like actually you want see this. a whole bunch of stuff starting until it's her sister, and then she's like, oh, "Like it, uh, that it's so small." Shoot, mm. but I think that's what. Well, I might have to rescind it. my. My unearned moment. No, it's, but like the rest of it though, I, I agree that like her singing, it goes on so it long. It goes on for so long. And she's just like, 
the joke is that she's telling other people's jokes, but that's over quickly. Oh my God, keep, that's awful. And they like, they spell it out for us too. Like, yeah, I wish that she just would have started singing then. Here's the, my big hit. Like you don't have to do the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Still unearned. She got it's me, still unearned. She got me my career. They do a little uh, a thing where... They're like, I live there now. It was Susie's idea. Like, yeah. well, she lives in Indonesia. Right. And I'm like, oh, she she also Got pushes her problems to the side. Right. She moves them away. Um, I get it. It's like, it's a little heavy. It's a little heavy handed. Yeah. And because they even like, they cut to the, the people talking about it and they're like, that was weird. She did all these weird things and she just repeated other people's jokes. I'm like, I know. I know you wish it. if it would have been, you, that line would have been funny if we hadn't seen it happen yeah. right if we just have her like or start it, singing the disco and then it just like cuts over and it's like wow that was weird wasn't it yeah it was weird uh yeah she just started telling other people's jokes she just picked up the they, index cards we don't actually have to see it happen it's funnier actually just having the story told and never actually getting the opportunity to see her sing her disco song there, yeah. this just would have been a better way of doing that one i think so I, yeah. it wasn't quite right but i think there's they that try to make it work that, because that purpose there to have her yeah. Do the bait and switch. And again, I think they did too many things in the episode. Yeah. And I, I think they wanted to hit a certain note. Like, they didn't want it to just be like, two people are telling these two different stories. They sure. wanted it to feel like There's a, a dynamic test deal. Like, that's a thing. Ugh. I'm, I'm a little I bit. I guess that's, that's like the honorary unearned. Unearned is just the title of the episode. <laughs> the, the episode, the I whole just, concept. I'm very eye roll about test to roast deal. Yeah. Um, it, I get what they're trying to do. And actually, it does accomplish what they want it to. Yeah. But they could have done it without calling it a test to roast you. I know. It just would have been a testimonial. Yeah. Yeah. Any other, any other uh, hmm. superlatives you'd like to best? Um, I mean, do we want to do like best Alex Borstein acting moment? I know you kind of did. I kind of did. Your Oscar moment. I did. I mean, I think like. How about best, best other performance? This other <laughs> performance. I'm going to, I'm going to give it to, to Rose Weissman. To Marin Hinkle as for a the, specific for the scene when she's she's shooting her commercial. That's not this episode. Oh my god, it's not. No. Oh jeez. Hmm. Then it's just when they're <laughs> when she and Tony Shalhoub are just repeating. It's like it was very ex the the cake was very expensive. Yeah, but it was very expensive. It was quite it was pricey. Quite pricey. <laughs> it's so I kept just stupid. Like repeating into yeah. my eyes. That was funny. Oh, it was very funny. I think what was interesting to me that out of all the people playing comedians, I thought the person that was like best and funniest was the guy playing Mike Carr. I think he yeah. he did really well in the whole episode and it just outshined these weird outside people because we knew him too. Yeah, like we, we did know, know him. We know the complexities. We know right. the background. And it's like weird trying to like jump in with these new people. I thought that was weird. Um, but I would say his performance was really, really solid. Like I, I felt like he was like really grounded and like he was actually like there because his character yeah. was probably solidified. Maybe yeah. that's part of it. Like, it felt like a real person doing a real right. talk. Even at the end, they bring him back to be like, I actually know the the real story behind this one. Because they each have like a turn of like, oh, I know the I know a little bit from her, from a little bit one. from her. Yeah. But he's like, but he the way he does it, I think, is the 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 most yeah. convincing. Maybe that's like the crux of the problem that I'm having is yeah. that like they have a they're doing this testimonial with people that we, we don't, don't know. know them. Yes. It's like, why are you the expert of this? And as you say, yeah. like the moment we get Mike up there, it's like, well, we yeah. do have a relationship with Mike. We have a relationship as an audience with Mike. And so when he goes up to talk, like we fill in that blank too. Which is funny because like they, they get through the thing. He's like, oh, I wanted to talk about my, my boss who I think was, didn't get his, yeah. his, his right, uh, what is this? Like, whatever. Right, but he's the guy that uh, he hated like, the whole time. That's not true. He hated him. I'm like, we, we, know, we know that. Yeah, we know. We he know. talks about it the whole time. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There was a little bit too much like. Heavy handed kind of 
yeah, I'm like, we know more about this story than you guys do. <laughs> so yes. very much what it feels like. We are yes. closer to them than these people who are ostensibly supposed to be Susie's closest, you know, people for this testimonial. And it's interesting. I do think maybe this is a, a theory in okay. the moment that they they stylized some of the stories based on hyperbole until it's the stories that we're supposed to believe. Right. Yeah. Like even the, even the, the triple crown stories, there's something, there's something a little bit unbelievable about it. about it. Yeah. It's like a little bit like that one, the most were like, like, we don't know what Susie says to that person. Like they don't even give like a, an example of that. Yeah. And it like is too good to be true. It feels right. Um, but then we see like the different versions of her and Harry Drake and they're like, clearly they like, spend more that's, time on one of them. Right. And even at the end, they're like, that's not what I heard, but like, you're supposed to kind of feel it. And the, in the Hawaiian story, they're like, Oh, I really hope this is true. Yeah. But, like you see her really have emotions. And then same with, um, the their actual friendship split right yeah the one it's like there that's where it's really grounded in reality yeah yeah so i think maybe they were using some of the earlier ones to like be kind of exaggerated yeah to give that fairy tale view to be a little bit larger than life even the beginning of the hawaii versus the end of the hawaii yeah it's like ah there's i there's sure a, do love oh, hawaii <laughs> is that a ukulele playing in the background some like cute little yeah I, I liked some of those like cute little because they're stories. This is yeah. this is made up. This is this is fantasy in these people's heads. So like like that they're re, in telling the story, musing that like <laughs> she's so happy and that Dinah like hears a ukulele in the background because she's like so happy in Hawaii. Yeah, like that 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 is like silly to me. Like yeah. that, and I think that is. Again, it's like, and and the pigeon winked at me. How yeah, I'm so right. amused. Why yeah. am I so amused? Because you're easily amused. It's like feels very like slapstick. Yeah, slapstick and, vaudeville. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Even even like Joel being like, he's ripped apart the thing, being like, "Where are your books? They're at the accountants. No, not those." And then he finds them in the floor. <laughs> yeah. These books, like at that moment. I'm yeah, like, comical, larger but than hy- life. Yeah, hyperbole. It's just it's fantasy. Again, they're playing with style. They're playing with a lot of things. Yeah. I think we've gone long enough. Yeah. I think we can <laughs> wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Then a Moment. I'm Pavi. And remember, if you're going to say something in the 90s, you don't have to tell us everything about the 90s. Very true. <laughs> Stupid. Um, and I am Colin Funk. And remember, we don't want some blow. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> no blow. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Then a Moment, a Pavitas production project, hosted by Colin Funk and Pavi Prochko. This podcast is produced by Chicago Podcast Studio. Our opening cartoon was created by Gloriu, and our theme song was composed by me, Pavi Prochko. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite listening platform. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at Then a Moment Pod, all one word, for updates on new episodes and behind the scenes content. If you have any feedback, comments, concerns, or kudos, you can email us at thenamomentpod at gmail.com. Please rate and review us wherever you can. It would help us out a bunch. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.